Good morning, my friend. My name is Vicki Maris. I'm going to visit with you about ways we can be communicating with our followers, our members of our email list, members of a congregation, clients or customers of your business throughout change. And of course it works at other points in the year as well. I invite you to share this broadcast out, invite a friend to watch with you, or as you share it on your own Facebook feed or other social media channels, people can watch this video on replay as well. I would love for you to add a comment as you join the broadcast, either in real time or on replay, and let me know where you're watching from. I want to share an example with you about why it's valuable to be able to reach out to your audience in different forms and social media. So doing a live stream like I'm doing right now in a Facebook Live is just one of many ways that we can be keeping in communication with our followers, with our members of our organization, or with our prospects. A couple different things I've been working on through the past couple of months as the world has been in quarantine, as we're all taking measures to protect one another from spread of the coronavirus, and we, a lot of us have gone online with things. I've seen a couple of examples and gotten feedback that people have really appreciated various means of communication. So let me give you one example. My husband Scott Greason and I have a music business. We're both musicians. Our band is Scott Greason in Trouble with Monday. And there are a couple of us that work at maintaining the Facebook page, Scott Greason Music. We have a number of followers that are out there on the page and really interactive, engage with us uh, under the posts, the videos, the Facebook Lives. But it's not our only way of communicating with people. We had a concert that we had pre-recorded that was part of the Tippecanoe Arts Federation Festival, The Taste of Tippecanoe. It's a long-standing festival that normally would be conducted in the downtown streets of Lafayette, Indiana. It's a big fundraiser for the Tippecanoe Arts Federation. And this year they moved the festival to a virtual event and a number of the bands and music acts that were going to be a part of the festival if it had been in downtown Lafayette agreed to provide video of their performances. And that was incorporated into a Facebook Live that was premiered this past Saturday night. One thing that we experienced Saturday night, we, we had done things leading up to the event to invite our fans and followers to watch the broadcast and to join. All, all of our band members were watching from their various locations and were in the comment thread adding comments and responding to people. So we were inviting our fans and followers and people who are new to our music to be a part of that experience. Usually when we're up on the stage playing music, we don't have opportunity to interact like that with our fans. So it was really fun. The band was really feeling the love that night we had promoted for about a month leading up to that event that our part of the festival, the virtual festival, was going to go live at 9 p.m. And due to some various factors, there was a time change and we got notified the Thursday before that our time slot would be at 8.50 p.m. So we took some steps to modify our social media graphics. We sent out an email to our email list. We, our band members like literally got on the phone and also were texting people to let them know that we had this time change. You might have a phone tree, you might have a text messaging service that you use where you could broadcast something out to a great big list of text messages of your fans or followers. So we didn't just rely on social media or just on Facebook to let people know of the time change. Then, the night of the event, there was a, a couple of hiccups, which would be expected with an event that was that long. It started at 4 p.m. and went till 10 p.m., and there was a lot of moving pieces and parts. So we were bracing for the fact that there might be something that could go wrong. You know, Facebook, we might lose the connection to Facebook, you know, who knows? Well, we got informed about, I don't remember exactly the time, but roughly an hour, maybe even less, before our concert for our band was supposed to go live, that now our time slot was gonna be at 8.20 instead of 8.50. And we didn't want our fans to miss the concert and to miss being there with us while we were there and ready to comment. 
And so I got on our email list service. Uh, Scott and I use one called Get Response. I have a link to that if you're interested in that particular service. If you go to vickimaris.com forward slash resources, you'll see my link to Get Response. It's a great email service. I find it really easy to use. And I emailed everybody on Scott's music list very quickly that we had a time change. And I sent an email out to my list, people who subscribe to the Vicki Maris email list, to let those folks know. So there was an, an alternate way that we communicated. I also want to share with you the example that you cannot communicate too often or too many times. First of all, just think of this one social media channel of Facebook. Not everybody is on Facebook, and for those people who do have a Facebook account, they're not all using their Facebook account at the time that you might be communicating a change of plans. So that's why it's so valuable to have an email list and have all of your regular members to have all of their current email addresses. That's one way. I've already mentioned the there are services you can use to text message, to send a broadcasted text message out. That's something that Scott and I may be putting into action here in the near future. All kinds of different ways. You might also have a phone tree, one of those automated phone trees that you could put into action. You might have somebody who's positioned and ready to quickly add an update to the front page of your website. That's actually a really simple change that you can do. And Websites are, are places where people would go and go, I, you know, wonder if they've made any announcement about what that change is. Or if, let's say you're a church and you're figuring out how to communicate to everybody that you are starting to meet back in the sanctuary. Or you want to communicate some social distancing guidelines that you have in place. Just telling people in a Facebook Live one time is not enough just telling them in one email, not enough. You would also want to be aware of what are your email open rates. I find, I'm confessing to you, I find I get kind of numb to emails. So if I get a church newsletter email once a week, I often don't open them. Meaning no offense to the person who's writing them or sending them out, I just am super busy. The subject headings do not usually grab me and get my attention. So I just don't open them. So if you, if you have some really important information that you've put in your email that's been sent out to your members, your followers, then maybe you also want to do a Facebook Live, do a static social media post, you know, create a little graphic. You could use a, mo a mobile app like LixPix or WordSwag to create really great looking graphics. Uh, one I like to use when I'm at my computer is called Canva and the, and you can get all of those for free. You can also get paid versions of those if you want to have some of the fancier bells and whistles. I hope you kind of get where I'm going with this. Send out your message in many different ways and using many different media, not just one social media channel. If you want to know where your followers are. So if it's Facebook and Instagram, then put your message out in both of those places frequently and in different formats. Static post, video, Facebook Live, different people. Like maybe you might have different members of your team who would come on and do a broadcast or who would create the posts. Different people who would write the emails. Uh, maybe a subject heading in your weekly email could say something like, important message from and insert the name of the person who wrote the email for you. Get people's attention in other ways. All right, I'm gonna stop with that. I hope that you find this helpful. You can, we'll, we'll be able to find more information like this out at my website, vickimaris.com. I'm beginning to build it up with information like this and connections to my YouTube videos about this type of thing. You can certainly follow the page here, Teach, Inspire, Connect. And then my YouTube channel is Vicki J. Maris. So if you search YouTube for Vicki J. Maris, you'll find that channel. You can subscribe and click that notification bell, which will inform you when I've posted a new video. Take care. I hope you're having a great day. Thanks for sharing out the broadcast.